what I want to do is a review on the ProFit, got it upside down here, um, pole dancing pole for your home. It says a uh, professional 45mm portable spinning pole dancing pole. And um, this was got, I got this particular model from Microfiber Products Online. And um, they sell this model of pole for um, everyday exercisers, not for um, anybody aspiring to be a uh, professional pole dancer. Now, um, as a lot of you who follow me in my videos, you know that I'm really not a fan of any pole with plastic parts, and this pole does have plastic parts. And, um, but the company that makes this, they assured me that this was a safe pole to dance on for everyday women, and so um, I agreed to, do, to use it in my home. I used it personally, um, and what I'm going to do is basically show you how it works and tell you about how I feel about this pole and my experience. Um, with it. I'm trying to be open-minded about plastic parts. Cars are made of plastic. I'm still not a fan of plastic. I don't think I'll ever be a fan, but um, we're going to do a review on this pole anyway, so here we go. I'm going to throw the box aside. Um, like I said, because I've been using this pole um, in my house, it's already unboxed and I have used it. I just um, took it all apart so that I could show you basically um, how this goes together as compared to other pole dancing poles available on the market for your home. Um, so what we're going to do is um, I'll give you my thoughts on my experiences with it as we go, but basically I'll show you how it goes together. And basically you have your base and this is your um, base and um, this is your, you know, a pretty typical size for your base. It does have um, some rubber on the bottom that is black in this case, and the rubber is pretty soft. Now the um, rubber on the X pole or the affordable no brand that I sell on my site, um, it is soft like this, but um, the the rubber on the X pole and the affordable no brand work better than this. In that um, the grip, the rubber is supposed to grip the floor so it doesn't slide, and that protects the pole from coming loose. And if you watch, if I push, I can get a little bit of a slide out of it. Now it's not bad, I've seen way worse rubber. So this is soft and um, pliable, it's not the best that I've seen, but it does give you a little bit of stick, which is good, it's just not a perfect stick. Okay, so this is the base, and what they do is they have you take this, this is their adjuster bar, um, and with four, three screws, then you, um, you know, attach it to the base. So I'm gonna do that really quick. I do like that the base is screwed on with these, um, um, screws, um, my affordable no brand the, that I feel is very sturdy, and um, you know, of course, the X pole base also. They have screws in the bottom of the base like this um, to make you know the stem or the adjuster bar um, sturdy. There are no brand poles out there and other poles out there that don't use screws in the base or they just have complete plastic parts in the base. And I feel like that's completely insecure. So I do feel like these screws are a more sturdy option. And I, and this is made of metal. Um, there's no plastic parts on this. So I feel like this contraption here is pretty cool. Um, and I like that, um, in particular about this base, um, you will go over it later, but um, this right here is the locking mechanism where you push, pull up on this um, for spinning mode. And then of course, um, you're going to press down and lock it into place for static mode. And this feature, I actually like it better than the X pole and better than the affordable no brand pole, um, just because of the way that it's designed. Now, the, the downslope to it is that it's covered by this big plastic piece. I don't like that, and I wouldn't trade my X pole or my affordable no brand for this. It just this feature is pretty cool. It's it's a lot easier than using the two screws that go in the side of the base. Um, to change it from static to spinning. This is easier. I, I do like this piece better. Um, next thing that you do is that you um, screw the main pole piece on here. And I'm going to do this really quick and fast forward so I don't bore you. Okay, so I got my main pole piece on. Um, once this piece is on, um, I remember when I unboxed it, um, I was under the impression that um, this pole hooked together similar to the X pole in that they use these little joints. Now, X pole joints are made of solid metal, and these joints are made of plastic, as you can tell. Um, and so, 
this is where I got kind of like, okay, I don't know how safe this is. But when I unboxed it, the main two pieces don't go together with those joints like I thought they did. They actually screw together. And the thing is, is that this is pretty standard with your poles, you know, X pole, their very first model, um, their poles screw together before they switch to the X joints. The affordable no brand screws together. So screwing poles together actually can be really, really safe. Um, on the flip side, I bought poles that were made of too thin of metal and that screwed together and I bent them after inverting on them after a month. So you do need to get a pole that is made of good quality thick metal. And when you look at this, um, I'll give you an up close of the affordable no brand and this um, thickness of this metal, as you can see. And as you probably noticed, the um, this metal for the Profit is quite a bit thinner. This is um, the thinness of the pole that I bent inverting on. This isn't the same model. It was a, it was an off-brand pole that I had bent. And so um, when I first put this together, I was really leery that this pole might bend also. Um, but I'm not an expert on how they do this metal or anything. I just watch for certain thicknesses. You know, and then of course, um, some of the pole manufacturers have gotten really savvy about their um, manufacturing practices and they'll actually seal the joint on the end um, so that you can't see the thickness of the pole. So you have to look to the opposite end. So you kind of got to be really careful about the thicknesses of your pole. The thicker the metal, the better. Because it'll last a long time. Um, you know, these, these can bend, especially if you're um, maybe a heavier um, galler guy or you plan on doing doubles. You wouldn't want to use this pole at all for that reason. I feel like it's, it's definitely too thin. Uh, the weight limit on this, I believe, is 225, I want to say. I could be wrong about that. Um, 250 pounds. It says, when properly installed, pole supports a load up to 250 pounds. Okay? So, um, basically, um, I don't weigh anywhere near 250 pounds, so I felt it was safe for me to um, try and just use it at home for regular use, um, for exercise and stuff like that. So the next step um, in the instructions, and all the instructions come in this little booklet here um, that they put in there. There is no uh, DVD or anything included with it. But this is the um, adjuster cover that's going to cover up that um, the base piece on the bottom. And then, of course, the next task is to understand your ceiling height. Now, I know my ceiling height is 8 foot, and I know that the extension that I'm going to need is this little guy. Now, these extensions are pretty standard. You're going to notice that one is small and one is tall. In a lot of these dance pole kits, you're going to get two extensions with it. Um, usually, it's considered a 125 mm, which would be the smaller one, and the 250 mm, which is the bigger one. In this case, they just go by um, inches, which makes it a little bit um, easier to understand. But the size of the extension is approximately the same of what you get in any other pole. Similar to the X-joint, these slide together, and there's a little notch here that they created where the plastic sits into here, and then basically the other end slides over the top of the pole, and that's it. Now, what I don't like is that's it for the installation. With the X joints on the X pole, there are two holes, and you have a hex key where that metal is um, widened by turning a hex key, and the metal joint inside the pole actually expands and locks the extension on. This, nothing locks it on. It just slides on, and it's only supported by what appears to be a solid or semi-solid piece of plastic. It's not even really solid. It's got these, these um, vented slots in it, but so... I wouldn't even consider that solid, but anyways. So I don't use these, this piece right here. This is extra for me. Um, so I'm just going to throw that aside. Last piece is this um, dome. This is the top. And again, you're going to see that um, there is some black rubber on the bottom, same type that's on the base. And it's that soft rubber um, that will grip. And um, this does not permanently install into the roof at all. Now, um, this was... Probably the part about the pole, aside from the thin metal, that I didn't like. Um, when I got the pole installed, 
it was really, um, it stayed up. I didn't have a problem with it coming loose or anything, but the dome made me feel unsafe. And the reason why is because um, most of the ceiling domes on removable or portable poles, they actually, um, let me slide this on real quick, and it just presses on. But those domes on um, like the X pole or my affordable no brand pole are wide enough to span two ceiling joists. And um, the benefit of those wide domes is that if for some reason you accidentally installed it incorrectly and it were to move, the width of the dome actually will catch and keep the pole from tipping over. And so that's an added safety benefit where I feel safe. And um, not that I recommend doing this at home, but just to kind of make my girls in my class feel a little bit safer, I have deliberately, with my affordable no brand, installed it so it was just a millimeter away from the ceiling and then pulled on it so that the pole went sideways and then hung on it for them so they could see how that dome would catch them and keep them safe in the event that it did come loose for some reason or I hadn't installed it tightly enough. I love that added feeling of safety because I do um, a lot of swinging on my pole and inverting on my pole. Um, while I did invert on this one, I could never get past the security that I, I, I just don't feel as safe with this. It's not as safe. If this thing moves, it's coming down. It's not going to catch because it doesn't have the width of the dome. And I hope that makes sense. At least I didn't feel like it would. And um, for me, that was enough for me to not want to use the pole and actually switch to a different brand um, because I needed to feel safe. Um, and I, I just couldn't get over it. The other downslope to that top piece is that um, I'm going to lock this in static. This is the part that I like. It goes into uh, static and spinning so easy. Um, got to take it down. The other part that I didn't like about the dome, as I was saying, is that it, it's black rubber and it actually left a black ring on my very white roof. Now, the black ring wasn't, um, it probably wiped right off with a cloth or something like that, but I just don't, my... The white rubber on my other poles, they don't do that, so um, I was disappointed to see that I had to clean the roof when I got it back down. Um, so the next step is, um, is basically similar to the X pole. You just turn the pole counterclockwise, and it expands to put pressure between the ceiling and the roof and install the pole, okay? And so if I do this, you can tell how it hits the ceiling. Now, in the instructions, I was disappointed to see that they didn't tell you that it's important to install this pole underneath a ceiling joist. That wasn't listed in there, and if you did already buy this pole, install this underneath a ceiling joist um, because it's safer that way. You need a supporting structure, structure um, behind the ceiling plaster or drywall or whatever you have up there to support the pressure of the pole so that it stays standing. That's part of a, a good, safe installation. And when this one in, in its installation instructions, they failed to mention that part. Um, so, but anyways, I know where a ceiling joist is in my ceiling. If you need help finding um, one of those, I do have a different video on how to use a stud finder to find it. Um, and you'll find that link below. Um, I'll give it to you in case you need it. So anyways, this is up. And um, just to give it a quick level really quick before I tighten it, I'm going to be sure that it's level. Now, on a quick note on getting it level, um, I don't have a level with me. It's recommended that you use a level to get them perfectly straight. But I like to light up four corners of the pole to be sure it's parallel, just to get it installed. And I noticed that with the um, smaller um, ceiling piece on this, it was much harder to guess if it was um, if it was straight up and down because that top piece moves so easily to side to side that I, it was just harder to get it perfectly level, but not, not horribly long, just as compared to other poles. So that looks pretty straight, so I'm gonna go ahead and twist it and tighten it. Same as the X pole, you're gonna turn it counterclockwise until it tightens. I'm gonna go for about right there, and then when it's tightened, you pull up the adjuster cover and there's a locking nut, and um, um, you're going to lift the knock locking nut up so it touches the um, base of the um, bottom pole. And then you're going to use this tool that they give you, and you're going to tighten that into place a little. Now 
this is very similar to the affordable no brand pole in that there's a locking nut that seats up against a main pole to lock the pole in place so that when you're spinning on it, it doesn't unscrew itself from the ceiling. That's what makes it secure. The difference is, is that this is on the bottom on the Profit, um, and then on the affordable no brand, it's on the top. I do like it on the bottom better because it spares you from needing a ladder to install. Is it easier? They're about the same, uh, minus the ladder, and it's nice to not have to get the ladder out. Um, so basically, that locks it into place, and then um, technically the pole is installed um, correctly from here. The other added piece in the kit besides the tools and the instructions would be a my pole or yeah my pole light. I keep calling it a me pole. Um, it's a, basically a flashing light that flashes to the beat, and they send this to you for free in there. And the my pole, um, I gather, and I'm not an expert on this brand or anything, but the Profit was a um, newer model of the my pole. They have the my pole, which doesn't spin, and then the my pole 360, which spins um, all the way around. And um, then they came out with the Profit, which is kind of, I gather, maybe replaces those two models or it's better than those two models they created, I'm not really sure. But this brand is, is somehow associated with the MyPole pole. And it does come in 45 mm and 50 mm, I believe, and that was the advantage where you could pick your size if you want to. The price tag on this pole is $189.99. That's the exact same price that I charge for my affordable no brand, and I feel like the affordable no brand is by far a more quality and safer pole. Um, I feel a lot better on it than I do this one, and for since they're the same price tag, I would go for an affordable no brand over this one. However, if you like the light and you like this brand and stuff like that, it is worth buying. Um, I felt safe dancing on it as long as I wasn't doing any strong tricks, and I would never recommend this for somebody um, who is going to do a lot of tricks where they're pulling really far away from the pole and using a lot of momentum. If you're a heavier person, um, not recommended. And if you're gonna do a lot, of, a lot of inverting, I wouldn't recommend it either. I just go for something safer. If you're the type of light user at home for exercise and you're just dancing around the pole and the um, spins and the climbs that you would do would have your head straight up, nothing with your head pointed towards the ground. You know, something like a front hook spin or Something of that nature where your head's always up, I feel like this is very safe to um, do some pull spins on. You could climb it pretty easy. I didn't have any problem doing that, so um, that I felt pretty safe on. I just could never feel safe doing, um, you know, swings away from the pole where the momentum goes outward and I would be pulling to the side on the pole or inverting. I just, internally, I couldn't get used to, to that feeling like I was safe, so it didn't work for me. The plastic here, um, this uh, pulls up and of course you can change the uh, pull to um, spinning or static mode. Um, it is pretty easy to pull it up um, and it might get in your way if you were going to try and invert because sometimes if your ceiling's low your hands might be towards the bottom. That's not always the case though, but the, so that might, you're not going to be able to grip this, so it takes away the usable um, part of your pole because that's just so slick that's not going to work for you. So uh, depending on your use, that may or may not be a problem. Um, otherwise, the, uh, you change it from static to spinning by pulling up on this piece right here, and you just pull up on it for spinning or push it down for static, that's my favorite part, and then it changes to spinning. So. And as you can tell, it's, it spins really smoothly. And, um, but however, I can hear the bearings, and I don't know if you can hear this or not. Um, it's, it has a noise to it, so I can hear the bearings turning, and that kind of concerns me. I'm not a bearing expert on it, um, but I have bought you know, different no-brand pulls in the past, and I spent a lot of money for a spinning and static pole, and then the bearings froze up on me after using them for a month, and my spinning pole wouldn't spin no more. So whenever it's not completely smooth, and um, and I can hear anything, I just kind of get a little concerned of like how long are these bearings going to last. And I don't know if hearing it's a good or bad thing. I just know with the X pole and my good affordable no brand pole, you can't hear anything um, for the most part. In this, you can just hear something. But however, I used it for a month, 
it's still spinning just fine and it seems to be pretty smooth spinning also so I don't know that it would really ever give you any problems so far so good with my trial um, my overall um, assessment is is it's um, a good mid-grade pull um, it does have a little flex to it also um, if you pull on it uh, it's um, got a little flex which is okay um, it's more than the um, higher quality or you know than the higher quality brands um, for this hype of pull however um, this has a lot less flex than the Carmen Electra pull and I feel like this pull is a lot better than the Carmen Electra so if you're thinking about buying that pull at least upgrade to this one because Carmen Electra I'll put that review um, to my Carmen Electra review that I um, did on that pull below so you know about that pull too but the, you know it's basically um, the metal was very thin and there's plastic parts on the bottom in the Carmen Electra pull and it just when I pulled on that pull it was very flexible and in this one um, it's a little flexible, but not nearly as bad as those really cheap old pulls. So I'd say it's a good mid-grade pull um, in that regard. So um, other than that, that kind of sums up my um, summary for this pull. I hope that um, this helps you make a good educated decision on what you would like to buy for your house. And um, otherwise, have a great day.